Hi, I'm Richard Slade of the Seawood Group, and in this short video, we're going to take you through the features of the Apollo 500 Plus Portable Appliance Tester. So, here we have the Apollo 500 Plus Portable Appliance Tester. The Apollo 500 Plus um, is ideally suited for um, people that are looking to carry out their testing in an automated fashion in that um, you can store the results, removing the need for any handwritten um, records or paperwork. Um, it's ideally suited for anybody doing sort of medium to high volume testing, and again, if you're carrying out testing in house or as an electrical contractor. Um, starting off with sort of physicalities of the tester here, um, as you can see, it's got a full colour HD display along with a QWERTY keyboard. And in the back here we have the rechargeable battery pack, uh, where again you'll easily get a full day's testing. Memory wise, the Apollo 500 will actually store uh, 10,000 record slots. And on the top here we have the uh, socket there for doing the uh, plug and obviously uh, the equipment in that you're testing. We have a USB download. Uh, the top socket here is obviously for your test probes and then we have the socket here so uh, for one obviously plugging in the mains to charge the instrument or if you are looking to carry out any leakage testing obviously we can also plug it into the mains there as well. Then we have the IEC socket there so if you're testing uh, kettle leads, computer leads, IEC leads obviously we'd, we'd make the connection through the device there. The Apollo 500 Plus itself does come pre-programmed uh, with a, a range of automated test sequences so again rather than knowing what tests you've got to carry out on what equipment, what all the pass and fail parameters are, they are pre-configured in the tester. These uh, user test parameters or test sequences are uh, user configurable, uh, so again you can create your own um, to suit any equipment you may be testing or any particular uh, sort of long leads or things that you may wish to cover as well. The 500 does cover all tests required in the IET 4th edition code of practice. Um, it has the facility with two tests here to test fixed appliances uh, using the point-to-point -point testing methods. It has a 250 volt insulation test also for anything sensitive or uh, any IT equipment that you may be testing, so it protects its tension needs, anything like that. And we have the RCD test built in. So again, if you've got any plug-in RCDs um, or RCD protects extension leads, the facility to do that is uh, also in the 500. Um, like all of the uh, Apollo testers in the range, it does have Seawood's very own uh, ZAP technology. So when you're carrying out your earth continuity testing, um, you will always get good, reliable, consistent earth bond readings. All of your asset information is logged in the tester, uh, so when you are starting a, a new appliance or a new asset, site locations, uh, asset descriptions, retest periods and that are um, inputted into the instrument, again removing the need for paperwork or handwritten manual records. Um, when carrying out the testing, obviously the, um, when you're going out to retest, the 500 does have the facility for uploading test data back in uh, to the instrument next time you go around doing your retesting. So uh, you can either tap, type in the asset ID number or scan your barcode and it will recall all of the uh, data required to carry out the test on that appliance again. We also have the risk assessment sort of uh, frequency of test calculator built in. So again, um, rather than sort of referencing the IET code of practice book and, and table in there, you can simply put in things like environment, use, equipment type, and it will um, assist and guide you in your retest frequencies. Along with uh, obviously the 500 being able to log portable appliance testing records, we now have the facility to create your own user configurable uh, test user inspection forms or uh, custom user tests. So if you're carrying out other tasks um, whilst out uh, doing testing, so things like ladder inspections or maybe Legionella uh, temperature readings, fire door inspections, vehicle checks, you can log all asset information in here and it's all user configurable. So again, any routine PPM inspections that you're carrying out, you can actually asset ID and log in the instrument as well. So again, this is removing the need for tick sheets or Excel spreadsheets. The 500 Plus also can be used with associated accessories, so we have label printing systems and barcoding systems, and if used with the Test and Tag Elite 2 printer, um, the 500 Plus can read a 1D or 2D QR barcodes as well. The instrument obviously with its 10,000 result memory can then download to PackGuard 3. Um, because all the information is actually stored within the tester, um, when you do your download there's zero manual input on the software side, uh, your tester basically creates your whole database for you. 
Um, if you do have remote engineers out in the field, then the uh, 500 Plus does allow you to uh, Bluetooth pair up with a smart device. Therefore, the engineer can send download data files back to base without the need of coming back to the office. So to show you how quick and easy it is to use the Apollo 500 Plus, uh, we're going to carry out a test on this Class 1 kettle. So I have the uh, kettle plugged into my uh, pack tester here, uh, by the socket on the top there. I have my crocodile clip connected to the uh, element with inside the kettle, and obviously we're sure the kettle is in its on position. So here we have the Apollo 500 Plus, um, and we're going to carry out a test on the Class 1 appliance. Um, like all of the Apollo series uh, testers, you do actually get a auto mode and a manual mode. Uh, but for the sake of the uh, demonstration here, we're going to go into the auto mode option. Um, so the first thing that comes up then is obviously asking me for my appliance ID number. One of the features in the 500 Plus is uh, if you are starting a new site and starting from scratch, you can actually set the instrument onto auto increment. So every time you wish to carry out a new test, it will just increment the asset ID number by one. Again, saving you having to keep typing in asset ID numbers. Your second box down there is your category of equipment then that you're going to be testing. Um, so you can see we have a whole host of options available. So in this instance, we're going to select the uh, portable handheld class one item. I can then obviously log a site and location as to where the equipment is uh, situated. Now, if I'm doing a number of appliances in the same location, your site and your location will remain the same until you change otherwise. Um, going to the bottom of the list here, then we have the retest period for the uh, formal visual inspection and the combined inspection and test. Um, one thing that I mentioned earlier on in the video was the frequency test calculator. Um, so by hitting the F3 key here, what it enables me to do is um, select certain information about the equipment, um, where it's situated, its class, its construction. And what that'll actually do is um, indicate what the formal visual frequency and combined inspection test should be. Um, so that it can now save that risk assessment as part of the asset and it'll auto uh, fill in the retest periods for me. So once we've got the front screen um, all completed there, we then go into the visual inspection. Now we'll see we've got the list here um, of all the sort of required checks uh, that are listed in the IET4 finishing code of practice. So at this point I can either pass and fail them individually. Um, it does allow me to log uh, power rating and fuse sizes should I wish to, but we've also got the pass all key here. So if the formal vision inspection has passed, rather than hitting a pass on, on all your options there, I can just simply hit pass all. It will then go in straight into the earth continuity test, and there you can see it's giving me a nice clear indication numerically and via colour as to the test status, and then moving straight into insulation tests. At the end of the test, we now have the uh, comment section. Um, so at the top of the test here, for instance, I can put in an asset description. Now you'll notice, because I've used Kettle before, it's actually uh, predicting asset descriptions for me. Again, uh, saving your time inputting the same data in over and over again. And I can use the other sections for any notes I wish to make, uh, log repairs, or if I wanted to, I could even put in sort of make model serial number. Once I've completed the test, I simply hit my save key. And at that point now, that information is now stored in the memory of the tester and is ready to be downloaded to PackGuard 3.